last time we were talking about the ratio test and the conclusion from the ratio test provides absolute convergence or divergence. So if we get a conclusion from the ratio test, then we're either gonna get divergence or absolute convergence. So we need to talk about the different kinds of convergence. This might be too much for a Monday, but maybe that's exactly the right time to do it. But you won't worry about it too much because like, I'll ask Monday, how bad could it be? So let's talk about the difference between convergent, uh, absolute convergence and conditional convergence. Here's a definition. This says nothing about why we have these two kinds of convergence. This is just saying how we're gonna divide up the convergence. Absolute convergence means we can make all the terms positive and the series still converges. We didn't need a bunch of negative terms to get convergence. So what's not that? Not that means if a series converges, but if we make the absolute value of all the terms, the series diverges, that's conditionally converging. We can think of it as meeting a bunch of negative terms. So a conditionally convergent series needs those negative terms to get convergence. Absolute convergence doesn't need all those negatives. It can make everything positive, still convergence. That's a much stronger condition. So the conditional convergent series, we could think of it as needing the negatives to converge. So think of a conditionally convergent series as having a bunch of negative terms mixed in with the positive terms, but we need to make those terms negative because we need to subtract a bunch. Otherwise, our series just grows. So we want to read conditional convergence as uh, a weaker condition. It needs all those negatives. Now, if we think of it in big terms, we have a bunch of positive terms, we have a bunch of negative terms. We're looking at a situation where we have infinity minus infinity. This is a very unstable situation. This doesn't mean anything. If I said, what's infinity minus infinity? Then we can't answer it. It does not exist. That doesn't make any sense. Because if the first infinity is bigger than the second infinity, then we're gonna get just infinity. If the negative infinity is more infinity than the positive infinity, then we're gonna to go to negative infinity. Or the two could be in some kind of balance where we have positive infinity and negative infinity, and they kind of cancel out to some finite amount. That's what's going on with conditional convergence. We need to balance out these two as infinitely positive and as infinitely negative. And that's a very sketchy thing to be balancing. So we want to think of we can think of conditionally convergence as being right on this border. We're looking at infinity minus infinity, and a conditionally convergent series says that's going to come up to a finite amount. But with an absolutely convergent series, I can just take all the negative terms, make them positive. The sum is still finite. No, we're not. The, we're not talking about radius of convergence. That's for power series. So a conditional convergence series needs all those negative terms to converge. A place where we see this. Uh, a test that comes up for this is the alternating series test.
So the alternating series test is where we might find some series that are conditionally convergent. So let's first get the setup here. Let's suppose we have an alternating series. So that's a, the alternating refers to the side, positive and negative of the term. One term is positive, the next term is negative, then positive, then negative, then positive, then negative and so on. So, oops, here, let me show you one. Uh, so this says that AI is positive for all I. So the AI is greater than zero for all I. So this is just to make sure that we have an alternating series. And that the sign and all those negatives are coming from the minus one to the n part. So minus one to the n is something that we is what we use to make series alternate. If n is even, then minus one to the n is positive. If n is odd, then minus one to the n is negative. The alternating series test says that if we have an alternating series, if the terms decrease, that's what this first piece means, if the terms decrease and the terms go to zero, then the series converges. Let's make a note of what we're talking about here. So here, this zero is less than an plus one is less than an. This is just saying that the terms decrease. Let's talk about why this is significant, and then we'll prove this there, this uh, prove this test um, with what is hopefully an audio memory from your childhood. If you would recall, it's possible for the limit of the terms to be zero and a series still diverge. It's required that the terms go to zero, but that doesn't mean that we get a convergent series. We need the terms to go to zero and something else. We need the terms to go to zero plus something else. The alternating series test says if the terms decrease to zero and the terms are alternating, then we get a convergent series. So terms are decreasing to zero, 
and the series alternates. That's the extra thing. The series one over n to the p, the limit of the terms is zero if p is uh, positive. The limit of the terms is zero, but are they going to zero fast enough? What's the extra thing? P has to be greater than one, then we'll get convergence. The terms go to zero and P is greater than one. The limit of the terms has to be zero and we have to have something else. In the ratio test, the limit of the terms has to be zero and the limit from the ratio test has to be less than one. Then we get convergence. The alternating series test is offering another way, another additional thing to have to take limit goes to zero, limit is zero. And this extra thing, the alternating series test, then you get convergence. That could be that extra thing. The terms decrease and alternate. The alternating series test is very easy to prove. If you had a door with one of them spring door stoppers on it. So you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes they bolt the door stopper to the door. And since they, they don't want to just pick it on a metal spike because it'll jam into the baseboard and wreck it. So they put it on a spring. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Now, what do we do with the spring door stop? We flick it. And when we flick the spring door stop, what does it do? Brrr. Right? So if we get trouble, you get grounded, you sit there. Brrr. Brrr. That's the alternating series test. We add something, then we subtract a little bit less, then we add a little bit less, then we subtract a little bit less we are clearly going to be zeroing in on something. If we think about the sequence of partial sums, we subtract after we add, but the amount that we subtract is less than we just added. Then we add less than we just subtracted. Then we subtract less than we just added. So if we start down here with zero on the number line, and up here is the first term, A zero. I add A zero. Then I subtract A1, but A1 is less than A0. So I definitely don't go past zero. Oops, because it's minus. Then the next term in the sequence of partial sums, we would add A2. But when we add A2, it's less than we just subtracted, so we won't be going past A0. Then we subtract A3. This is, the, this is how the alternating comes into play. We subtract A3. The amount we're subtracting is less than what we just added, so we will not go past A0 minus A1. So here's the zero term. Here's S1, here's S2, here's S3, and then S4. We're just gonna be bouncing back and forth and each bounce gets smaller. So we must be zeroing in on something. The limit of the sequence of partial sums always be between the previous two terms.
So S6 will always be between S4 and S5. S7 will always be between S5 and S, S6. So we flick the spring, then it goes back and forth and back and forth, but it's a little bit less each time. That's why if someone asks you to prove the alternating series test, just go And if they act like they don't know what you're talking about, they have to be really snooty to them and rude and think they are below you. Trust me, it's how we've been teaching people math for thousands of years and it's worth, oh, shit. I guess we'll have to find maybe a nicer one. Any questions? This is just using the alternating series test. It's called a test as if we're gonna run it on some series. But what's the only conclusion that we can make if we're actually starting to invoke, if we're gonna invoke the alternating series test, what is the only conclusion that we get to make? There's no test here. The series converges. That's why we're running the alternating series test. If we're not running, if, we, if a series diverges, we wouldn't even bother invoking the alternating series test. We would not need that. That's the tool that we don't need from the drawer. The only thing the alternating series test can do is tell us if an alternating series converges, at which point we already knew, right? But if there's no nails in the project, we're not gonna go grab our hammer. I guess, unless you really don't understand how screws work. Because if you apply enough power, you can use a screw as a nail. But I, it's just not going to be very effective. You know what I mean? Like aerodynamics is important. If you have enough thrust, you can make a brick fly. But but anyway, probably our favorite example of an alternating series that converges is the uh, an alternating series that's conditionally convergent is the alternating harmonic series. The alternating harmonic series is conditionally convergent. No, this is a specific alternating series, the alternating harmonic. So what we notice is that the terms in the alternating harmonic series decrease to zero and they alternate. Therefore, the alternating harmonic series converges by the alternating series test.
Here's how the argument would go. Since the terms decreased and the limit of the terms is zero, the alternating series converges by the alternating series test. If the series is alternating, we just need the terms to decrease to zero. Which is really two things the terms decrease and the terms decrease to zero. So the alternating harmonic series converges, but at the absolute value of the terms, the har regular harmonic series diverges. So we've got convergent from the alternating series test, but we're not going to get absolute convergence. Because if we look at the absolute value of these terms, we get the regular harmonic series. Alternating harmonic series converges, but the regular harmonic series diverges. So therefore we say that the alternating harmonic series is conditionally convergent. We want to make sure that when we're looking at a series, decide if it converges or if it's absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. We don't want to look at the uh, alternating thing and say alternating means conditionally convergent because it doesn't. But this is how the human mind works, especially the human mind trained in the way that we normally train them in math. When you see this, do, do this because this thing. You're trained to react to things. And we also do this visually. So you're trained to react to things visually. So right now, at this moment, you're in a very dangerous spot. Because right now, the only example of an alternating series that we have is the harmon alternating harmonic series, which is conditionally convergent. So you're thinking alternating means conditional, and it doesn't. So that's why I immediately have to turn around and give you an alternating series. That is absolutely convergent. The series is alternating. The series is alternating and it is still absolutely convergent. If you look at the terms in absolute value, you get the series one over n squared and one over n squared convergence. So the series in absolute value is still convergent.
The other thing that we want to note here is that this series is alternating, and I didn't even mention the alternating series test. It didn't even come up in my discussion because I looked at the series as a whole and I said, oh, I don't care about the alternating part. This is a one over n squared that converges. I don't need all these negative terms to get convergence. So this is this series is absolutely convergent. Okay. I know the series converges because it's a P series with P equal to two, which is greater than one. The fact that it's alternating just go make it converge faster into a different amount. So the alternating is not the important factor here. One over n squared overrules the alternating. Is that right? Okay. Look at the whole series, not just for pieces. Think about what alternating might give us. It might give us conditional convergence. If we don't, if we look at this, ignore the alternating part, and that series diverges, then at most we're going to have conditional convergence. And that's pretty unstable. I haven't explained why conditional convergence is unstable, except in the most vague of terms, because we're kind of balancing on this infinity minus infinity. And that's really unstable. If someone's like all confidently saying, this will be fine because it's infinity minus infinity, and that'll give us a finite amount, right? And they go, nah, that's super sketchy. I don't think I will be investing with you. But if you take that infinity minus infinity and make it infinity plus infinity, and we still get a convergent series, that then we're okay. So I have certainly implied, but in only the vaguest of terms, that conditional convergence is a little bit weak. Let's talk about why. Recall that the alternating harmonic series converges. Recall that the alternating harmonic series is conditionally convergent. Conditional is not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on the fact that it is convergent. So let's put this in parentheses. We want to include the conditional because we want to make sure that we're correct. We have three choices now. Absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, and divergent. We want to make sure we got the right one there. But right now we want to focus on the fact that the alternating harmonic series is convergent. That means that if I take all the terms of the alternating harmonic series, We get some finite sum. I can't think offhand what this sum is, so I'm going to say it's going to be S. Alternating harmonic series is convergent, so we're never going to get a finite sum.
one of the things that we know about this um, this kind of addition, even though we have an infinite number of terms, if I cut every term in half, I cut the sum in half. I know you're all thinking, dude, that's obvious. That's just how addition works. We're not in the land where addition works like we normally think it does. So it's an important thing to be able to conclude that if I cut all these terms in half, I get half the sum. So if I multiply all the terms by some constant, I can just multiply the sum by that constant. I should also have written that the series converges. This statement doesn't mean anything if the series diverges. The most dangerous part of this is how much sense it makes. Cut all the terms in half, then the sum should be one half of that, right? Makes perfect sense. That is a terrible way to argue about something, especially when there's infinity involved, because we don't have good instincts about infinity. This is why we really can't have proper conversations about infinity with the general population, because the general population hasn't studied infinity. It's only a concept to them. They haven't put the rigorous work into trying to understand what the F is going on when we put this plus dot, dot, dot. Because like everything's like all cool up to this point, but then we write plus dot, 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 and all the calc students are like, oh shit, this just got weird. There's this period where it's like all, this doesn't seem weird. It's like all infinity. It just goes on forever. And it's just kind of like some floaty concept. So no one thinks it's weird. But then you know. You start to understand what infinity is about. And someone writes dot, dot, dot. And you're like, whoa, things just got weird. Right? This is the understanding. This is an eldritch horror. Because not knowing, you can be faced with these things and you're fine. But once you know, once you have that knowledge, the knowledge begins to drive you mad. You know what I mean? That's the nature of Elder Four. You've begun to understand things, but it's fleeting. That's what drives you mad. You know what I mean? For the most part, people just say, oh, it's so ugly, I go crazy. No, that's not how it works. Eldritch horror has, there has to be some kind of understanding. And it's the understanding being just out of reach. You've glimpsed it, but now it's just out of reach. That's what's driving you mad. Starting to understand something. So this is a most dangerous time right now for your sanity score. I don't know what game system we're using, but this is a dangerous part. So don't look at things and say, well, that seems reasonable because that's when someone's gonna creep up on you and take advantage of you. That's when that happens. Like, oh, doesn't it seem reasonable that this is a good idea? You know, like, well, yeah, that seems like a great, that seems like it would work. You're like, well, yeah, totally, give me all your money and then we'll go make a mint. And then all of a sudden that person doesn't return your calls. Gosh, I wonder what happened. Because they seems reasonable on you. Seems reasonable, right? Anybody that's trying to end an argument that way, that's where you need to stop them. You need to say, no, show me that it is reasonable. Anyway, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to multiply all the terms by a half.
So I'm going to have a half minus one fourth plus one sixth minus one eighth plus one tenth minus one twelfth, and so on. The big deal is knowing that if I multiply all these terms by a half, I multiply the sum also by one half. Also, zero is the additive identity. I can add zero as much as I want and not change the sum. Now, I'm not adding things that are close to zero. I'm adding identically zero, just zero. Because I'm going to write my half alternating harmonic series. I'm going to put a zero in. And then I'll have my uh, plus one half plus zero then minus one fourth plus zero, then minus one, then plus one sixth plus zero, then minus one eighth, and so on. And importantly, we do not change the sum. We have two convergent series, and we add the terms of those series, we get a convergent series. Furthermore, the sum after we add the terms is the sum of the previous two series because they're both convergent. So I can just add those sums together. There's another thing that seems reasonable, but it's very dangerous to just be left. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this first sum from the alternating harmonic series and add it to this third sum. I'm going to add those two lines. So if we add these two series together, just a term by term, one and zero is one, minus a half plus a half is zero, a third plus zero is a third, 
a third. Minus a fourth minus another fourth is minus two fourths or minus one half. Then I got a plus one fifth. Plus, minus a six plus a six is zero. I, should, went, I guess I dot, dot, dotted too early. No one's gone mad yet because they don't see what's happening. You don't see what's gonna happen to something that you believe really strongly. Try to cut another couple of terms, wait for someone to go mad. So we see what's going on here. I've got one plus a third minus a half, plus a fifth plus a seventh minus a fourth, plus one ninth plus one eleventh minus one sixth. So what we're doing is going two odds, two positive odds, and then we subtract an even. Oh, we ran over time, sorry about that. So probably best I don't reveal this. Last semester, like four students just like went insane on the spot. It was, it was really bad. Fortunately, I had a soul crystal on me because I knew what I was gonna be doing that day. And I had previously warded the doors, so we were safe. But uh, tomorrow might be very dangerous. All right. That's going to do it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow. Where we will descend into madness. That's it for today. Everybody have a good day. Thanks for playing.